When I write introductions, it normally takes me a long time to think of something clever, but when it comes to the topic of 10 times the WNBA humiliated and destroyed themselves, all I gotta do is turn on some highlights. Bonner. Three on one, off the back. Reiner left alone. Yeah, your eyes didn't deceive you. You just witnessed the worst step back jumper that was ever recorded on live television, the worst off the backboard alley oop ever recorded on live television, and uh, why the heck does this defender move out of the way, and then how the heck does she miss that wide open dunk? You know, when it comes to the WNBA, it's really no different than watching an extended episode of Shacked and a Fool. <laughs> And while I say that in jest, the truth is every single year, the WNBA manages to do something that humiliates and absolutely destroys their own image. Like, for example, in 2022, Steph Curry won the All-Star MVP, and this is the trophy he won. It was carefully designed by Victor Solomon, who's known for designing awards that cost up to $30,000 to make. The 2022 WNBA All-Star Trophy, on the other hand, believe it or not, was this. <laughs> I'm not kidding about this, guys. You literally cannot make this kind of stuff up. The 2022 WNBA All-Star Trophy looks no different than this little tin canister I found on Google that sells for $17.95. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no award. This is a joke. In fact, the internet blew up after that with many people saying that is a small trophy. Actually, it's not even a small trophy. It's a tiny trophy. It's a trophy so tiny that you wouldn't even give it to high school athletes. That's barely a little league trophy. You know, it was so bad that even her teammates and fellow WNBA players were mocking her and the award. If you thought this was bad though, wait until you see this next one. So uh, this is the Warriors 2022 championship parade. As you can see, the streets are packed with people, the confetti's falling, and hundreds of thousands of fans gathered to celebrate all the hard work and tribulations that these Warriors went through. But uh, the WNBA, on the other hand, looked like this. <laughs> There's literally nobody there. Nobody. In fact, there's actually more traffic during a regular season rush hour than there was when it comes to this so-called parade. Now, if this ain't the definition of humiliation, then I don't know what is. Oh, wait, I know. So uh, let's talk about trades for a second. When it comes to NBA trades, we can all think of a few trades off the top of our heads. Anthony Davis to the Lakers in 2019, Kyrie Irving to Boston in 2017, and Shaquille O'Neal to Miami in 2004. These are just some of the countless NBA trades that immediately comes to my mind when we're talking about NBA trades. For the WNBA, on the other hand, I think I speak for 90% or perhaps 99% of NBA fans when I say the only WNBA trade that I'm aware of is when Brittany Griner was traded for Victor Bout. <laughs> yeah, as crazy as that sounds, as an avid basketball fan, the only trade I'm aware of when it comes to the WNBA was when Brittany Griner was traded for the quote unquote merchant of death. <laughs> and I ain't done yet with Griner either. You see, back in 2016, she declared that she could beat DeMarcus Cousins in a one-on-one. -on -one. And when NBA players like DeMarcus Cousins and Kevin Durant said that there's no way that could happen, she responded with this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Holy camoly, guys. That's about as bad as the Kwai laugh. Anyway, 
Brittany Griner's head coach for the 2016 Olympics was asked to chime in with his thoughts on who would win in a one-on-one -on -one match, Griner or Cousins. He responded, I'm going to go to the ATM and I'm going to sell my house and I'm going to put all my money on DeMarcus Cousins. And the truth is, he has really good reasons to say what he said because, look, when you go online and type in who's the GOAT of the WNBA, Diana Taurasi's name comes up immediately. Well, in the 2021 WNBA Finals, when there was just 1 minute 44 seconds left on the game clock and the score was tied 72 to 72, she missed a wide open layup. <laughs> this is supposed to be the GOAT of the WNBA blowing a wide open layup in the clutch moments of the finals in what's supposed to be the most competitive league in the world. Uh, yeah. In 2018, a WNBA player actually called the WNBA the most competitive league in the world. Just hear it for yourself. We work tirelessly in the WNBA. It's the most competitive league in the world. It's only 144 women mm. that get this blessing to have the opportunity. Nobody's really retiring and every year it comes in great talent. So it's the highest level of basketball. And if you love basketball, um, you love the WNBA. Anyway, if you thought that take was crazy, wait until you hear these next ones about the wage gap disparity. We, we are not asking you to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking to get paid the same percentage of revenue. So a lot of people don't understand that we're not asking for the same. We're asking for, you know, a similar, not even the same shared revenue, but a similar percentage of revenue shared. Okay, so as you've just heard, Kelsey Plum recently went on air to talk about the wage gap disparity and how it's unfair that WNBA players aren't getting paid as much as their NBA counterparts. And she specifically talked about the difference in revenue sharing, but the... Uh, she needs to take a business class or something. I mean, as recently as 2018, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, stated that each year since the WNBA has been in existence, the league has had an average loss of $10 million per year. And while the WNBA popularity has increased a bit since then, and while the WNBA has seen revenue increases, there's still no indication that the league is reaping a profit yet. If I had to guess, it's still a net negative when it comes down to the profits and loss column. So asking for a raise, whether that it's in revenue sharing, is just absolutely ludicrous when the owners are still losing money. And what's even worse about this is, the WNBA often pushes back when they get support or advice on how to improve their situation. Like the time Luca tweeted out a support in this video. What's up, Ricky? I know you're having a great season, so just keep pushing. I know you're gonna be the rookie of the year, so the best of luck to you. Well, I kid you not when I say that a WNBA team replied to this by saying, says a guy who hasn't been to a WNBA game all season, but got sent a jersey and recorded a scripted video. Like, why are you trying to guilt trip people into attending their games? You know, whether it's scripted or not, one of the most marketable players in the NBA voiced out support for your league, and you're just going to blast him like that? And it didn't stop there either. One time, Shaquille O'Neal gave out some constructive advice on how to improve the WNBA, and he was outright rejected. Just hear it out for yourself. Ten years ago, the WNBA game was here. NBA game is here. Now it's here. I have a way to make it equal. Just listen to me now. You ready? All right. We've heard it. Yeah, we've, we've. So in beach volleyball, the women's net is maybe half an inch lower. You think if we just lower the rim so y'all could dunk like we dunk, that'll give y'all more oomph than you already have? No. I mean, because listen, y'all are doing the, the step back, the pull back. Y'all doing everything we're doing, but I don't see a lot of people going up with two hands and, you know, back. Oh, it's coming. Hand. Opportunity is a... So you don't think if we just is drop it to nine, ten nah, and a half? I'm, I, I'll what guarantee think, Layla, she's in the dance, but my next child will be drop step Duncan. So uh, about this, I don't get it. The WNBA three-point line is a bit shorter than the NBA three-point line. The WNBA ball is a bit smaller than the NBA ball. 
A WNBA game has fewer minutes than an NBA game, but when it comes to another idea that could potentially increase the value and excitement of WNBA games, why would they just shut it down like that? I mean, if the rim was just a bit shorter, this would have turned into an actual highlight instead of a joke. It's no wonder why you have some people commenting, I'm so mad, I had two WNBA tickets in my car, and today someone broke into my car, and now there are four WNBA tickets. Like, if there were more dunks and more excitement to the game and brand, then maybe people like this guy wouldn't be clowning around and sleeping at games. <laughs> All jokes aside, guys, this video was just a jest of the WNBA. I personally believe that the potential is there to make the league great. Not NBA great, but at least to levels similar to other widely recognized female athletic competition. I mean, look at Naomi Osaka in tennis, Ronda Rousey in UFC, Eileen Gu in skiing. The first things they gotta do though is stop complaining about pay, figure out how to create more buzz to their league, and most importantly of all, stop handing out small little tin canisters as trophies. Ah!